All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Kruger Show with a little 49er video. The Niners making major decisions in Niner land. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's bring up Pig and a Pickle, the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Two locations, Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week in both from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle. The best barbecue in all of Northern California. Get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Go say hi to Damon and Mary and tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. Well, the 49ers are off to a 3-0 and start after beating the New York Giants last night at Levi's Stadium. The Cardinals are next. The 49ers, the Super Bowl favorite as we sit here in late September. And today, the 49ers made a Big decision announcing contract extensions for general manager John Lynch and head coach Kyle Shanahan, both extended into the future. We don't know how far into the future. Now, Shanahan had previously signed a six-year deal through 2025. He signed that deal in 2020. Um, In 2019, of course, John Lynch was named executive of the year. Uh, Both have signed multi-year contract extensions. Kyle is now making, according to reports, somewhere in the neighborhood of $13 million a year, uh, which makes him one of the highest paid coaches in the NFL. The duo joined the Niners in February of 2017, and they've had a lot of success. They've won two NFC West division titles. Uh, They've reached three NFC championship games in 2019, 2021, and 2022 and had one Super Bowl appearance after the 2019 season. So, um, you know, since 2019, the 49ers are have have 45 wins, and that's tied for fourth most in the NFL over that period of time. Niners are 55 and 46 over the seven seasons these guys have been here, including a 6 and 3 record in the playoffs. So, you know, they've both been really, really good at their jobs. I mean, let's be honest about this. Uh, During the Niners tenure or during the Shanahan Lynch tenure, or um, during the Shanahan tenure, I mean, they've both been here the whole time, the Niners have averaged 367 yards per game. Um, That's the fifth most in the NFL over that period of time since 2017. So they're here long term. Um, and they should be here long term. They've done a really, really good job. Kyle Shanahan has an offense that works. It produces points. He went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, he went to an NFC Championship game with a rookie quarterback who was drafted with the last pick in the draft. His offense works. They scored 33 points a game with Brock Purdy last year in Brock's rookie year. And they've continued that right into this year scoring at least 30 points a game in all three of the uh, season opening games this season. John Lynch has done a really nice job. I mean, let's give Lynch credit here. Uh, he had no experience, you know, and I, when, when this, when they were hired, I loved the hiring of Shanahan because I really believed he was an offensive guru and I wasn't sure about John Lynch. I like John Lynch. Uh, John Lynch went to Stanford. John Lynch is smart. Uh, John Lynch has got great ethics. Uh, He was going to be a very good face of the franchise. But when you're asked to be the general manager and you don't really have personnel experience, it's an unknown, right? So I couldn't really, even if I like the guy, and I do, um, I couldn't really give him an endorsement as a personnel evaluator because he had no track record as a personnel evaluator. But what we have found since he has come aboard is that the 49ers on an annual basis have one of the deepest NFL rosters year after year. He is an outstanding NFL general manager. He's partnered with Adam Peters. He brought in Peters, who's a Bay Area native, to assist him. And John has done, by all accounts, a spectacular job as the general manager. Um, Why do I have such conviction about Lynch? Look at the proofs in the pudding. The 49ers have a very, very deep roster, and they have a very deep roster almost every single year. They're also doing some things exceptionally well. Let's talk about that for a second. And I brought this up the other day with Dave Lombardi in a live stream that we did together. Um, Under Lynch, the Niners have perfected their whole roster-building philosophy. Um, They now... John, as a former player, understands the full dynamics of the free agency 
that exists in the NFL and its impact on the roster, relationships, and locker room chemistry. As a former player, he understands this, and he understands how delicate the balance is when you're dealing with players that you draft and develop and then introducing every year new players that you draft and develop and trying to incorporate free agents into the mix to build your roster. And it's not as simple as, hey, just go out and free agency and sign a bunch of guys. It's not that simple. It's not about, hey, we need a linebacker, a D lineman, and an offensive lineman. All right, go sign them. All right, we signed them. Good. We're good to go. No. There's a dynamic at work at all times that really impacts chemistry. You have to have good chemistry in pro football. You have to work together. You have to it's not like baseball where where you know you literally, you know, hitters can go up there, they can hate everybody in the room and if they hit 350 with 40 bombs, they're still helping the team. You have to work with your teammates in the NFL. You're not it's not like you're independent contractors. It's a team sport to to the ultimate degree. And John understands this. So what have they done? What's John's philosophy really been? His philosophy is if you're going to sign a free agent, go sign a difference maker. The last two free agent cycles, the 49ers have added Mooney Ward and Javon Hargrave. And they've added two really great football players to their locker room all the while letting other lesser free agents walk away in free agency and taking back compensatory selections in the college draft for losing X number of players, a bigger number, and only signing a small number of free agents. And it really works on, a, on multiple fronts. And here's how it works. If you sign Javon Hargrave, none of the other defensive linemen are going to have anything to say about it. Why? Because he's better than them. If you sign Mooney Ward, none of the other guys in the defensive backfield room are going to have an issue with it. Why? Because Mooney's better than them. He, if you sign guys that are kind of in the same tier as your existing guys, there's always a chance for resentment. And John, as a former player, understands that dynamic really, really well. You can't introduce new guys to the room and pay them more when they're actually kind of either less than or equal to the players that are in the room that you haven't rewarded with these big contracts. And yet in free agency, by definition, if you're going to acquire a player in an open market situation, you have to have a competitive offer. And oftentimes that forces you to pay more for a player than you would normally. So almost by definition, you have to overpay for players in free agency. John has elected to go pay for the top tier guys. So it, it doesn't change the chemistry because nobody questions Mooney. Nobody questions Hargrave. Nobody says, ah, I should got that money. They know they shouldn't have gotten the money. So on that front, it helps their chemistry because you don't have guys going, well, you paid this guy and I'm as good as him. I'm better than him and I'm not getting paid. And, you know, so that all that bad vibe goes away when you focus on just really elite top tier guys. Don't try to fill your roster with a bunch of free agents. Build the, the rank and file of your roster through the draft. It also has an effect. It keeps the age of the roster down. Free agents are typically older and draft picks are obviously by definition younger. So the 49ers, despite the fact that they're firmly in the middle of their Super Bowl window, they have the 26th youngest roster in the NFL. And that's largely because they signed only elite free agents recently. They let the rank and file free agent go elsewhere. They take back the compensatory selections and then they replenish their roster in the draft. Now it's a win-win, but you also have to hit on day three of the draft and you have to hit after the draft with uh, with college free agents that go undrafted. This has been another area of success for John Lynch and Adam Peters since they've run the personnel side for the 49ers. The Niners do exceptionally well on day three, and you need to look no further than last night's game. Brock Purdy, seventh-round draft choice, throwing a touchdown pass to Ronnie Bell, seventh-round draft choice. The Niners have done an incredible job at finding usable talent 
after the draft as college free agents from Raheem Moster to Jeff Wilson, uh, you name it. They've had a lot of guys. They've really hit on a lot of day three picks. Drake Greenlaw, thir- uh, day three pick. Fred Warner, uh, or I should say George Kittle, day three pick. I mean, um, even going back to guys that are no longer here, DJ Jones, day three pick. Jawan Jennings, day three pick. Um, they've done a great job, and, and the combination – of mastering that equation has kept the age of the roster down. The depth of the roster is tremendous and the star quality on the roster is probably the best in the league. So I I would argue this. I think John Lynch and Adam Peters are literally doing their jobs as well as any personnel gurus or general managers, whatever you, I'm not sure Peter's title, exact title. Uh, They're doing their job as well as anybody in the league. And he, John understands um, all the impact of bringing in only elite free agents. He understands the need and the importance to hit on day three of the draft and to be hyper-aggressive after the draft and trying to recruit as many players as possible. Um, and they're mastering it. They're absolutely mastering it. They've got a young roster. It's star-filled, and it's deep. That's really it. That's the holy trinity of building a Super Bowl champion. You got to have stars, you got to have depth, and you got to have good chemistry, and you got to have youth. It's a young man's game. And that's really it. I mean, he's got those factors all working right now. So John is a major success, and he has been phenomenal. He's a great face of the franchise. He's a terrific guy, but he's doing his job at a really high level and deserves this extension. I don't know what he got or for how many years, but I endorsed it fully. And as far as Kyle Shanahan, realistically, how many head coaches in the NFL are better than Kyle Shanahan? One, two, I would say uh, Andy Reid might be a little bit better of a play caller, but when you factor in age and longevity, um, if every NFL head coach tomorrow had their contract ripped up and they were all free agents, Kyle Shanahan would probably get the biggest deal of any of the head coaches. That's how well he's thought of. If the Niners decided to fire him tomorrow, like five other coaches in in the pros and probably five or six more in college would get fired the same day just for the idea that maybe they could attract Kyle Shanahan to run their program. So good move by Jed York. He locks up two guys that, you know, Jed's gotten this right. You know what? Why did Sh- why did uh, Harbaugh and Trent Baalke not work? Because they really were there to survive the other. They weren't tied together. Trent was there earlier. He was from a previous regime. Harbaugh came in immediately. The trust was broken. They never really forged any kind of a bond, and it didn't work because that relationship, the relationship between the head coach and the general manager is the central relationship that the entire structure of the football side of the organization is built upon. So you got to have that trust. Kyle trusts John. John trusts Kyle. Kyle's really damn good at what he does. Guess what? John's really damn good at what he does. I know for those of you who want to be hugely critical of one or both, this video is making you sick. I don't care. This is how I feel, and I know what I'm talking about. So, you know what? Congratulations to Jed York. Like Eddie D, he made made some mistakes early. Eddie D hired Joe Thomas, but he learned from his mistakes, and he hired Bill Walsh and John McVay, and the rest is history. Jed made some mistakes, hired uh, Mike Singletary in a victorious locker room. You never do that. Had the GM and the head coach talented. They were both talented in the Harbaugh uh, bulky regime, but they weren't tied together. Now he's got two guys that are tied together. They have a shared vision. They work together. There's a trust there, and they're both exceptional at the jobs that they do. And today's a great day for the 49ers. It's a great day for the 49ers fans because their hierarchy is locked up into the future. And there was some question, how long did John want to do this? Um, how long, you know, would, would the whole thing last? There's a lot of pressure. God knows Kyle Shanahan is, you can see how much he's aged since the day he was hired. He, he, he's, he, you know, the years have worn on him and the stress of this job has worn on him, but the Niners are in a great position to win that sixth Lombardi. They got the right duo to do it. 
And I'm happy for Jed to get this done. I'm happy for those two guys to get this security. They deserve it. They've done an incredible job. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show. Thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.